In 2021, I did this video and this video and this video. All of them did really well and they all kind of fell under the umbrella of looking your best every day or how to get yourself back after you've let yourself go or how to bounce back after a slump, things along that line. I gained a lot of new viewers and subscribers for those videos and it was super exciting for me at the time because I am someone who uh, is trying to pivot a little bit out of the beauty guru space and focus a lot more around things that are pertaining to goal setting, self-care, all things global. I mean, obviously I still love beauty and that's not necessarily the entire point of this series surrounding how to get yourself back or how to look your best every day. But it was very encouraging to see that this topic generated so much interest and I gained, like I said, so many new friends from it. So today I thought I would give you guys five more things to consider if you are interested in looking your best every single day or as often as you can. And because I have just made mention of the fact that that there are other videos in this series, which I will hopefully link down below. I'm not gonna get into my whole like manifesto about why I think this is a good idea, why I encourage it, but I will quickly say that I do not consider the act of, you know, looking your best every day really only extends to the physical appearance. I and mean, obviously that's a very visual, tangible benefit of putting that effort into yourself. For me, it's more about self-care. Like I truly consider your beauty and self-care ritual as an act of paying respect to yourself. And the way I always like to kind of explain this is to say like, if you are a goddess, which you are, um, how are you paying respect to the goddess? And self-care and putting on your favorite clothes and your favorite fragrance and favorite jewelry is a great way to do that in my opinion. So today's video will have some kind of try right now, really simple things you can do that will ultimately help you look better. Some of it are lifestyle changes and some of it's a mindset shift, mindset shift. What I'm really hoping to get out of this video outside of you guys getting tons of value from it is maybe some feedback on if any of these ideas or things you want to see more videos on because all of them are things I have been testing and trying out and I would love to do more dedicated content around it. So please let me know in the comment section down below if any of this is just calling to you and you want me to do a deep dive, I'd be more than happy to do so. In fact, I'm probably already going to do it anyway, but I hope you guys are on board. Before we get started, make sure you check the damn bar, links on my social media platforms, thumbs up if you like the video? Wow, my intro is like not coming to me today. Make sure you check the damn bar for links to all my social media platforms. Thumbs up the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you are new here, you know you want to. And as I said at the top of the video, if you are interested in goal setting, glowy things, maybe a little bit of a 90 day uh, exciting thing happening very soon around here that I'm working on that I'm trying not to say a lot about, but I feel like I have to say a little bit about, definitely make sure that you stick around and come follow me on Instagram because your girl has discovered reels and I love it. Prepare to get sick of me. So the first thing that you can do in order to look your best every day is to learn how to manage stress. This is my main goal for 2022. Not just because stress destroys the way that you look and, and actually not even just in the immediate either because certain things like uh, stress-related hair loss doesn't show up until three to six months after the stressful event in your life has happened. Trust me, I was admitted to a psych ward in October for panic disorder and my hair is just now kind of starting to fall out. It sucks. But then like high stress situations cause your skin to break out a lot more. And if you're like me, uh, you get scars on your skin that last for months and months and months. And then on top of that, stress related eating and things like that can cause your health or weight to fluctuate in ways that you cannot undo nearly as quickly as you did it. So going back to skin, I just have a couple of notes here that I found pretty interesting surrounding skin and stress. According to experts, when you are stressed, your body releases a lot of cortisol. Cortisol is my absolute nemesis. I'm trying everything in my power to at all times be considerate of and lower my cortisol. But the cortisol will mess up other hormones in your body. Um, this can cause stress acne. It also leads to an imbalance of good and bad bacteria in your gut, your gut, your digestive system, all of those things. Tons of information is coming out now showing that the aging process, the entire way your body runs to include your mental health is very dependent on the balance of good and bad bacteria in your gut. So this is nothing to play around with. 
Also, the experts say that stress restricts blood supply to your skin, which results in less supply of oxygen. And when the skin is deprived of oxygen and nourishment, it looks tired and dull. It loses its moisture, softness, and luminosity. It stops producing regenerating scale cells. I almost said scales. We are not lizard people, Whitney. It stops regenerating cells, and it could lead to uneven skin tone and pigmentation, which again, not easy to get rid of. So also skin barrier is a hot topic in the beauty community right now. And uh, all the slugging in the world is not gonna do a diddly squat for your skin if you are really, really exposing yourself to tons of stress. The reason for this is, and I had no idea, but according to Dr. Bo, a dermatologist who spoke in an article I found while I was researching the effects of stress on beauty. And if I can find the article again, I will link it down below. But yeah, Dr. Bo says, the barrier, your skin barrier, traps moisture in and keeps allergens, irritants, and pollutants out. Dr. Bo goes on to say that during times of stress, cortisol, there's that C word again, uh, slows the production of beneficial oils, and then we get dry, rough, and much more irritated skin because those healthy oils act as a protective layer for us. And without adequate lipids, the skin starts to leak water in a process called transepidermal, epidural, epidermal, epidermal <laughs> water loss. Stress also kind of leads to poor life choices in general. So not prioritizing one's health because we are in a constant state of stress kind of looks like doing anything that you can to feel better in the immediate. And it kind of forces you to live in a reactive state as opposed to a responsive one. Now, what does that mean? So like, for example, have you ever noticed that when you're stressed out, you know, you had a bad day at work, you come home, uh, you're already on the edge and then you're like, clothes get caught on a door handle or something and it's just like villain stage unlocking my villain stage right now like that's because you're reacting you're stressed out so now you're just reacting to the stimulus that's going on around you and you know being stressed out can cause us to be short with our loved ones which later on we're not normally very proud of but on top of that stress can cause you again like i said to focus a lot more on immediate fixes sorry i'm so fidgety <laughs> It's gonna make you focus a lot more on immediate fixes as opposed to focusing on long-term beneficial practices that could actually help minimize your stress in the long term. So I put it to you like this, like what would happen if your mind was clear enough and calm enough and it afforded you the opportunity to make choices based on your values, goals, and intentions as opposed to just constantly reacting to what is going on around you. That is why you wanna get out of this reactive stress-filled kind of vacuum that we might get stuck in from time to time. Also from Dr. Woolery Lloyd, 90% of the stress is not the stressor itself, but how we deal with the stressor. Again, there's that reactivity. So Dr. Woolery also said that as far as meditation is concerned, for example, Dr. Woolery Lloyd also said that it initiates the relaxation response which activates the body's parasympathetic nervous system. As someone who, like I said earlier, suffers from panic disorder, I understand now more fully the mechanics of the parasympathetic nervous system, and it really will run the freaking show if you don't get it under control. And to get it under control through meditation can help uh, decrease cortisol and inflammation. And with consistent practice, Dr. Willary Lloyd says, the skin barrier can stop leaking and start locking in moisture, which kind of points back to what we were discussing about how stress destroys your skin barrier. Um, Dr. Willary Lloyd also suggests that the fabled inner glow is less symbolic than it is scientific. Basically, it's saying that you can meditate yourself into glowy skin, like j -Lo Who. So a few other ways that you can manage your stress are through therapy. Um, obviously, planning will help alleviate a lot of stress. I'm gonna get into that in a minute and I will do more content about it. Um, also, controlling your sphere, as influence as, your sphere of influence as much as possible, especially now, stop the doom scrolling. It is serving absolutely no one. I'm sad to say, no, I'm not sad to say it. It's the truth. It might not be comfortable to hear, but it's true. So considering how dirty my hair is right now, this is gonna be really rich coming from me, but the next tip is to master the wash day blowout. And in general, learn how to take better care of your hair. And this seems like duh to a lot of people, but if you're like me, and you were really fixated on fashion and makeup and skincare for a long time and never really paid attention to your hair, it's shocking 
how much a good, flattering, easy to style, well taken care of head of hair elevates your entire look, even if that's all you're able to pull off that day. Hair makes such a difference. It literally polishes your entire look in a way that all the makeup and skincare and cute outfits in the world can't quite pull together if the hair is not laid and splayed. Is that an expression? So back in the Dizzy, wow, Whitney, wow. Oh God, I'm old. So a long time ago, I don't know if y'all's grannies ever did this, but my granny used to go to the salon once a week and she'd get her little hair set. <laughs> and she would rock that hairstyle out for about a week or so and then go do it all again. And some people, if they have the time and the budget, do that. They go get something similar, which is like maybe a blowout. And the idea is you get your hair blown out, it's smooth, it's shiny, it's bouncy, it's voluminous, and you're able to kind of make that hair work for about a week or so. Now you're gonna rely on things like dry shampoo, leave-in conditioners, you're gonna have to take care of it and uh, learn how to do a couple of day old, two, three day old hairstyles. But the point is once a week, you're really putting that effort into your hair and then the goal is to kind of not have to mess with it anymore. Now, this is not the easiest thing to master, especially if you're not good at hair and you don't have the budget for a weekly blowout. But if I can give you one tip and one tip alone, I highly recommend the Dyson Air Wrap. I picked mine up last September, October, November. I don't remember. I've had it for a little while and it's changed my life. <laughs> um, it's wicked expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth every penny because now really all I do to my hair is I have like a super epic wash day routine. We're talking hair oils, leave-in conditioners, uh, heat protectants, hair masks, cleansing it twice. It's a whole ordeal, but I don't have to do my hair the rest of the week um, because I've done so much with putting good ingredients into it and then the blowout that the Dyson gives me is epic. Now, before I got the Dyson, I tried the whole round brush Velcro rollers thing. Your girl can't do it. She tried, she tried, she tried so hard. She can't do it. Um, there are tons of tutorials that can teach you how to do it. Again, the point is to spend a little bit of that time on yourself, but reap the benefits of it for a long time. So I think it's worthy to learn how to do it. But if you get frustrated with the whole process and you want to just bite the bullet and get the Dyson and you want this humble YouTuber's opinion on it, absolutely 100% worth it. But yeah, that fluffy late 90s, early 2000s hair that's in right now, that's a blowout. So learn the master of, learn the master of the blow. Learn to master the blowout it will change your life. So the next tip is a little bit more of a mindset <laughs> that you guys are gonna wanna adopt as it pertains to looking your best every day or looking good in general, and that is that it doesn't happen by accident. Looking good does not happen by accident. You could put that on my grave, my gravestone, my headstone, whatever. This is gonna either be very empowering <laughs> to hear or this is gonna be discouraging. It really depends on the way that you look at it, but for me, it is super, helpful to be aware of this. I know that in 2022, after years of social media beauty standards becoming the norm and kind of infiltrating our everyday lives, it can be super easy to believe that beauty standards are very, very confining. I can't remember which video I talked about this, but I'm gonna kind of elaborate on what I mean by the fact that I don't think you guys need to worry so much about beauty standards, at least not as much as people do, because you really only have to worry about presenting your best self every day, and that is enough. That's good enough. This idea that only the Emily Ratajkowskis of the world are out here winning is an absolute joke. It's not true. There's a lot of average looking, but attractive and well put together women who are out here killing it every single day. And they're not sitting around worried about the size of their pores or if their jawline is snatched enough or whatever. They're just working with what they have and putting that intention and effort into it. Again, it doesn't happen by accident. It does take work and maybe a little bit of money and some time, but it is very easy to cultivate a beauty ideal for yourself that is going to work for you. You can't compare yourself to other people and then feel like, well, I can't attain that. I can't look like that. So this whole thing is pointless. I mean, if that works for you, if that's your journey, I totally support that. And I'm over here cheering for you on the sidelines. I'm not here to tell people how to live their lives. But if you clicked on this video, I'm <laughs> assuming that the idea of looking good and putting yourself together is at least something you want to explore. And I think that if you get too bogged down in the comparison trap and this need to think that, I don't know, the whole world should look like an Instagram filter, I, it's just not realistic. All you need to do is the best version of you at all times. And it's more than enough. And any, if anything, it is more than more most people are doing. 
most people, and I notice this more and more that I've kind of been talking about this on my channel, don't try it all. And that's fine, again, their journey, but you doing the best for yourself is going to automatically put you up here. But I'm saying all this to try to illuminate that there is kind of an art and a science to this. If you're trying to glow up or get yourself back or look your best or whatever, stunt on your ex, I don't know, whatever you got going on, you kind of have to figure out how to make this like a long-term practice. Cause anyone can kind of have that makeover scene that happens in movies, but people usually kind of revert back to who they are most of the time, unless you can change the way you look at something, change the intentionality behind it. It's typically just like putting a band-aid on the behavior, but the mindset has to change too. Or again, you're just gonna go back to the way that you were. So the planning of all of this is crucial. I have told you guys that I'm going to do planning videos. I totally am. I'm just trying to figure out a way to do this that I can teach you how to plan as opposed to like, look how pretty my planner is. Like it's the whole, you know, give a man a fish teach them to fish thing. <laughs> but yeah, none of this happens on accident. It's a choice. It's a prioritizing, it's planning, it's budgeting, it's putting that effort into yourself. That's why I say that this is an act of self-care. It's not the only act of self-care you should be indulging in. I no more think it is beneficial to put zero effort into yourself and be unhappy than it is to put all your effort in yourself and actually be unhappy. I think there's a balance that needs to be struck in the middle. And like I've said at the top, I think so many people get caught up in the competition of this that they don't even try to get in the game anymore. And like <laughs> the point of this game is not to win, it's to enjoy playing. In my opinion, I enjoy the shit out of it. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, I'm gonna give you guys a video on planning in general, particularly for self-care. But until that rolls out, if you want a quick tip on how to figure this out, Google Calendar Blocking, thank me later. So the next point I'm gonna give you guys is to start doing ice rolling, facial massage, gua sha, all of those things. And here's why. First of all, I have been talking about this since 2019. Like you can roll that beautiful bean footage and see that I have been advocating for these things for a long time. It was basically my introduction into beauty devices and beauty devices, beauty tech. What do I call this? Cause I don't think beauty devices is accurate, but beauty tech is my favorite thing in the world. Like I love makeup, I love skincare, but beauty tech does it for me. Microcurrent, the 7E microcurrent machine is the best one on the market, hands down, no questions about it. LED masks, amazing, will change your skin in ways you cannot believe. At home radio frequency, holy crap, your skin's gonna be tighter and have a lot less visible lines and wrinkles. Like these are kind of expensive, but definitely pay for themselves in the long run kind of devices that I have and use all the time. If you don't want to go down that road, don't go, go don't go down that road. <laughs> you guys know on Pet Cemetery that guy, what's his name? Herschel? What is his name? The older gentleman in the original one who's like warning the family. There's a part where he's like, don't go down that road. And I slip into it every time I go to Anyway, so you don't have to necessarily invest in all these super duper high end devices. You can just start doing things like facial massage, gua sha, and ice rolling. It has a huge benefit to your skin. Now, this is one of those things, as I said before, can't happen, it's not gonna happen on accident. You have to plan for it, prioritize it. Again, with your glowy self planner, glowy self care planner, great way to figure out when, where, and how you're gonna get that stuff in. But I have been doing a lot more, definitely ice rolling. In fact, I wanna do a video about cryotherapy for the skin because I have accumulated a lot <laughs> of cryotherapy uh, skincare tools. In fact, let me show you one. Look at this thing, okay? Isn't this intense? Like, wow, so pretty. They're so delicate though, you can't even put them in the freezer. I don't even know what to do with them. I've been playing a lot more with facial massage, lymphatic drainage in general. You guys, I've told you in a, about a book recently called uh, The Book of Lymph. It talks all about your lymphatic system. Cannot stress enough how much stimulating your uh, lymphatic system, particularly um, in your face, <laughs> will change your face. Like. Our lymphatic system, excuse me, rude. I just got an email from someone that said, what's holding you back from starting your YouTube channel? Am I hallucinating? Have I never had a channel? Is this all a fever dream? What is going on? But yeah, stimulating your lymphatic system, particularly around your face and your neck is going to drain it, make it look a lot less puffy, a lot more chiseled. Facial massage and gua sha kind of does the same thing, particularly as it pertains to things like face yoga. Facial massage in general is gonna help decrease the puffiness and it's going to actually increase 
blood flow to the skin, which is great for it. In fact, one of the things we talked about that stress does to the skin at the top of the video was that it deprives the skin of oxygen. So if that can do what it can do to your skin in the negative, think about what increasing that oxygen to the skin can do in the positive. Ice therapy in general, I'm reading this note right here. It again brings blood to the surface and helps restore radiance, encourage optimum cell function. It instantly reduces puffiness and redness, much like an ice pack can reduce swelling and bruising to an injured area. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but sometimes wrinkles, like for example, the reason Botox works is because it paralyzes certain muscles in your face that kind of create a wrinkle. Um, sometimes, and this isn't going to be true for every situation. It is true for me. I have a lot of jaw tension. I clench my jaw all the time. So gua sha and things like that do help. I do notice that some of the wrinkles, particularly around my mouth become more prominent. The longer I go without rubbing out my jaw, <laughs> it always sounds so graphic. Um, it, it makes a difference. I've not had this like confirmed by anyone. I don't know if this is a placebo effect, but I have noticed it cause I get this wrinkle right here on the side of my lip. Every once in a while it gets to the point where it just, what is this? You know what I mean? The minute I start taking care of rubbing <laughs> gua sha -ing or whatever, my jawline, again, obviously the main benefit is that it truly does help with the pain that comes with it. I get like headaches and it causes me stress, which is like number one thing we're trying not to have anymore. Um, it does change the wrinkles around my mouth. I don't know, I don't know, I'm just telling you. There are actually facial masseurs, mas masseurs <laughs> out there that have the ability to essentially give you a facelift through facial massage. Now, there is one guy in Nashville, I think it's a guy, I'm not sure, who charges like 250 bucks an hour for his world renowned big deal facial massages. And I'm willing, you guys, I am willing to sacrifice myself. I know, I know it's not something I even want to do, but I'm willing to do this just to report. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm dying to do it. I want to go see this guy and see what happens. It is something you have to do consistently and who can afford $250 an hour to get a facelift. But I just think there is something to be said for the act of stimulating the face, the facial muscles, working them out, strengthening them, keeping things up and lifted. And I feel like as a general practice over time, that's where you see the benefits of it, much like you see with your body. So ice rolling, uh, lymphatic drainage massage, um, facial manipulation, face yoga, gua sha, whatever you can do, start touching your face. If you want to know some great facial devices, girl, I am the queen. I will leave some down below, but start learning how to work out your face and work on your face at home regularly for those long-term, like bigger, bigger, more impactful benefits for like something you can add into your lifestyle basically. And I promise you, you're going to notice the difference. In fact, my objective right now is to do a 30 days straight, which I've never done it 30 days straight, uh, facial manipulation, face yoga, gua sha, facial rolling kind of challenge. And if I pull it off, I will post a video about it. So the next things I'm going to encourage you to do are to minimize salt, sugar, and alcohol. I'm going to talk a little bit more about sugar and alcohol. Um, apparently sugar <laughs> is interacting directly with your skin. Sugar increases the production of elastase and gelatinase, which are enzymes that break down your body's supply of collagen and elastin. All the collagen smoothies and stuff y'all are drinking in the world, again, are gonna really be for naught if you're not minimizing as much sugar as you can. Salt, on the other hand, decreases the body's production of short chain fatty acids, which are crucial crucial to your foundational beauty. They play a key role in protecting your gut's lining. Again, back to the gut, how important it is for a healthy body, healthy, beautiful body function as a whole. When salt starts messing with your gut's internal lining, you're going to be at a much higher risk for a huge amount of digestive issues, bloating, cramping, constipation, diarrhea, and leaky gut. And you already know, I think you know that leaky gut can lead to low energy, weight gain, brain fog, poor mood, and dull, lifeless skin. I am, this is a quote from an article. I wish I would have uh, cited my source. That was not just for me. That's a, uh, that's out there. <laughs> also, apparently sugar creates more testosterone. And if that's what you want, great. 
I don't. <laughs> I don't want any more testosterone than I need or already have because testosterone, according to Dr. Lancer, makes your pores larger, your skin oily, and turns your beautiful female skin into ruddy football player skin. Not what I want personally, but I support everyone's journey. Again, this is why I highly encourage managing stress because things like sugar, alcohol, and salt, essentially unhealthy foods, uh, become very tempting as temporary bandages for a stressful life. And all they do is exacerbate the body's internal stress. And you get on this like hamster wheel of trying to alleviate your immediate stressors, but creating more of them in the long term, especially with something like alcohol. Now, this is gonna sound judgmental, but I'm just trying to give an example because I'm not perfect to have my struggles, but alcohol is not something I struggle with and I'll tell you why. I was a bartender for most of my 20s. And when you're in your 20s, <laughs> early 20s especially, like I was, you can drink and drink a lot and feel totally fine the next day. It happened to me every single day because I worked almost every day and I always drank at work. It was where I lived and where the bars I worked at, it was almost encouraged to drink with your customers, you drink with the owners, like it was just part of what we did. Looking back on it now, I don't know how I lived because if I did that now, I would be in like a coma. There's just no way. Alcohol on my body at this point, I'm 36, immediately gives me a hangover, immediately. We're talking glass of wine, I have finished my glass of wine, here comes my hangover. The only solution to that is for me to like basically binge drink and then the hangover the next day, oh my God. Nope, no thanks. So this is very easy for me to not do, but I have other vices, don't get me wrong. In fact, sugar has lately kind of been getting me, which is odd because I've never had a sweet tooth in my life. I don't like chocolate, I don't like ice cream, I'm not that girl. But my daughter gets these freaking little Debbie zebra cakes in her lunch every day. And I almost, almost never can go to bed anymore without having one before like a little midnight snack. It's just not even midnight. <laughs> my pre-bed snacky time with my blanket and my juice. Um, I have to do it now. It's compulsory. It's it's really a testament to how addicting sugar is. It very much so is that way. Because again, I don't even have a sweet tooth. I'm much more of a nachos and like carne asada fries girl when I want to eat like shit. It's never sugar except for those damn zebra cakes. Like little Debbie is ruining my life. This is all to say that it's important to kind of notice the things that we're doing to our bodies on a daily basis and the effects that they have on us for the long term. If you're trying to look good, just do it for the look. Because again, I was a bartender for such a long time and I could always tell <laughs> the people, I mean, you, anyone could tell the people who tend to drink a lot. Their skin is dry. It's usually got a lot of like ruddiness, broken capillaries. They have bags under their eyes because when you drink alcohol, you cannot enter REM state of sleep. So your sleep quality is much more poor. Typically when you're drinking, you eat poorly. As a result, I have to. If I've been drinking, we're going to White Castle right now. But yeah, it's a lifestyle factor that can lead to you not looking your best not only in the immediate, but absolutely for the long term, because these are the habits we see on our face, body, and skin about 10 years down the line. And by that time, it is essentially too late. <laughs> this is why JLo looks so amazing. How have I mentioned her twice in one video? I don't know. She takes amazingly good care of herself. It's a choice she has always made. And it was probably boring to other people at the time. And maybe she's just so motivated and driven that it didn't bother her one bit. But I know people in my real life who do not take care of themselves internally, it has very much so made itself present on themselves externally, and it's only gonna to continue to do that because they're not changing any of the factors of their lifestyle now. All right guys, that's all I have for you today. As always, thank you to the patrons. I recently posted a poll over there. By the time you guys see this video, it should be live, where we're trying to figure out what the book club for the month of March is gonna be. I think it's going to, well, I don't know what it is. I haven't checked the poll, but the options are In the Flow, which is a book about how to live in sync with your menstrual strike, menstrual cycle. You are a goddess, which is about divine goddess feminine energy, and you can heal your life. Kind of explains it in the title. I'm excited to do the book club this month. It's been a while since we've done it. And in general, I'm gonna be rebranding Patreon and getting things cooking over there very soon. If you're interested, all the information is down below. Again, if you are new here, make sure you subscribe. And yeah, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.